And, and you, you kind of may have already touched on it a little bit already, but why is it important for providers to uh, ask or require some of their patients to take these genetic tests before they give a medication? And, and at, a, at a provider looking at it from a high level versus, you know, I, individually for the patient, better care, yes. But yeah. um, what, is the, what are the consequences if they, they don't use your solution? Um, and they are giving patients medication without uh, having details on genetics. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so, so pr traditionally, when when pharmacogenomics wasn't here, what people have been doing for um, figuring out the right medication for their patients um, is 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 trial and error. Um, and trial and error can you know can can work uh, for for some. Uh, medications, but in some situations, it may lead to severe effects, like adverse drug reactions, like the one for leprosy that I told you about. For cardiovascular, you know, you get rehospitalized a lot because the drug is too thick, too thin. You know, um, related to which uh, metabolizer profile that you have, or related to psychiatry, you might get patients who um, will have to try you know, seven different combinations of drugs to just get to the right point. And that takes a lot of money, a lot of time, and sometimes it makes the patients worse over time. Um, so these type of effects um, definitely, you know, fall under the category of better patient care. Um, but if I was, you know, a hospital and I put myself in that, in those shoes, um, in Asia, you know, there was a survey that basically says why hospitals adopt, you um, adopt new technologies. And it really is to, you know, a lot of it is really the, the novelty aspect. Unfortunately, that's how they look at it. Uh, so, so novelty aspect is important. I think because it's so new, um, a lot of when we talk to hospitals, it, we kind of tell them that we're going to be partners and pioneering this, this practice in Southeast Asia. Um, for example, one of our partners in Singapore, um, one of the hospital chains there, they're the first one to actually integrate pharmacogenomics information into their electronic health record system with us. Um, and and it, was, it was because they were interested to, to be pioneers in the field and also publish together in terms of what data they can find in the Singaporean population, for example. And so that type of collaboration we're very open to have. Um, so, so kind of up, uh, alleviating your brand image, but also um, but also kind of uh, uh, showing that you, the standard, the best practice for, for what medication and care should be. Uh, but also the second point is um, in relation to, to payers systems. Um, a lot of it, if, uh, you know, as more and more markets kind of, you know, invest more in private insurance and insurance overall, um, pharmacogenomics is a great way to increase quality of care and reduce cost. So it's a very cost-effective way to kind of uh, get better patient outcomes. Uh, but because you're kind of testing everyone in the beginning, the cost ends, uh, ends up a lot cheaper rather than having to pay for rehospitalizations for a select few. Um, so um, that type of calculations usually are encouraged by payers and payers generally uh, dominate a lot of the private hospitals that we usually work with. And so um, it may be a good approach for them to kind of consider that, that collaboration with payers as well. Um, and then uh, finally, um, is to um, kind of keep their doctors in, in house. I feel like, uh, you know, hospitals, doctors kind of reign, right, in, in, in Southeast Asia because they have less, uh, th th there's so much less doctors, or we need a lot more doctors, definitely. So um, as a CEO of a, of a healthcare provider, one of their mandates is to keep their doctors happy. And so, um, uh, you know, being able to participate in this type of research and new technologies, there's definitely a way, what we've seen is doctors are very interested to kind of try out in their patient population, being able to kind of, um, being able to kind of make the standard practice and, and also, um, you know, work with knowledge genetics on, on developing that expertise within that healthcare system conducting trainings in genetics and um, discussing use cases together. All these are things that, that I think doctors are very much looking forward to because genetics is not something that is commonly taught in medical school.